Nothing can stop me, I'm all the way up. Yes, 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 yes. No, 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 fuck, shit. Yes, 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 yes. Yo guys, it's Haunting Lime and I was finally able to hit legend ranking this week in the Ultra League Premier Cup. So after a week of trying to get there, because I was so close after the uh, Remix Cup, um, it's been a pretty big grind. Um, as you're probably already aware from playing in the Ultra League Premier Cup, there are so many XL Pokemon now, whereas last Ultra League Premier Cup, there wasn't too many, but you could see the occasional Umbreon and the occasional uh, a Galarian Sunfisk and Galvantulas, but now this is so common in the 2800s plus region. And uh, yeah, I tried my teams from uh, my previous suggestion for a suggested video, which was the five top teams to hit legend ranking, proven teams to hit legend ranking. I tried those, but uh, they were failing me. Even my own signature team failed me, which was um, which was Wing, Wing Attack Charizard, uh, Gyarados Safe Switch, and uh, Shadow Swampert. So I managed to find three teams that really worked for me so again going back from the information i gave in my previous video uh, for the ultra league um i'm just going to showcase these teams that have worked that have worked really successfully for me um it, with the inclusion of all the xl pokemon going around so my teams have no xl pokemon these are basically budget friendly to a certain degree but um, my teams are incorporating shadow ver shadow versions but if you have obviously non-shadows the team will still work really efficiently and all these pokemon are top tier i think can compete heavily well against the xl so-called pokemon so before i get started guys i just want to say if you please can support the video by uh, liking the video and um you know just subscribe to the channel this, these videos take a bit of time but i'll get on with the commentary so the first team actually is empoleon double dragon and this is a very common line that's uh, that was popularized many seasons ago and people still used it i did try this team on the first day of the ultra league and i got thrashed literally every team i came out with i got thrashed but i, I saw it as a so-called uh, motivation to kind of see what the meta was like and um, the second day when i used this team literally on fire like went 4-1 4-1 tried a different team out one of the two sets and then went five i think 4-1 again uh, or 3-2 sorry so the team performed super well um and it's a really strong team as you're probably already aware you've seen it around I can recommend it again because I've tried it out. I didn't think it would work with, with all the Galvantulas around, but it actually seemed to be working really, really well. And um, as you can see, an, an XL Altaria in the Ultra League Premier Cup. This, this, this Premier Cup is absolutely insane. There's so many XL Pokemon, which I'm going to rant about because it's just, yeah, they're so, they're so hard to like face against. Um, again, Chris, this guy, he's got a spicy uh, Pro Pass team. So yeah, XL Pokemon are a problem, especially XL Galvantula, um, which I've been seeing a lot more this season. Or this half of the season and it can really destroy a lot of teams Galvantula it's, itself is pretty op because it gets to his moves really quickly and lunge is such a heavy hitting move and Galvantula wins cmp a lot of the times so you have to really outplay Galvantula quite a lot so my team obviously empoleon going, going up against this uh machamp it's it's fine I'm gonna get the last shield off him and dragonite is going to be pretty much well I'm gonna get the last shield off him now dragonite is pretty much going to be the hard hitting uh, pokemon to kind of take the victory um and yeah my dragonite actually has uh draco meteor instead of hurricane because hurricane is a move that you can just about barely get to and i find when sometimes you're locked into the matchup against uh, like an empoleon I'll, i prefer the draco meteor because it actually hits really really hard um with uh, the shadow damage but um i'll actually get on with the commentary of the actual games now so again it's an abb team um use your kingdra as a, as a safe switch you base out the charmers and then your empoleon just farms them down so this team obviously will struggle a bit with double charmer teams but it's so good because it has so much like oppressive uh, fast move damage from waterfall uh double dragon breath against all the excellent pokemon so up against a really strong lead um obviously i had to switch out into my kingdra kingdra does kingdra does quite well against um, the uh, venusaur and again i overcharged a little bit here because i want my opponent to shield thinking it's uh, an outrage because outrage will actually take it out um, he shields and he switches that into his toxic rook so he gets quite a bit of farm from my um, kingra so my kingra isn't is actually excel by one or two levels you don't need a kingra that's, a kingra that's excel um, kingra is an amazing pokemon it is a little bit expensive but this whole team is fairly decent barring that you don't have a shadow dragonite um, and the regular dragonite works as well because it's a bit more tankier but uh, the extra potency from the uh, dragon breath as you can see does so much more damage so i prefer the shadow variant because it actually does it actually contends well with the uh, XL Pokemon. 
As you can see, you can see, uh, as you can see, you can clearly see how much damage the Dragon Bet's doing against this Galvantula. Uh, and Galvantula is fairly tanky in this league, and because it, it just debuffs you with with lunge. Um, and at this at this rate, I was like, you know what, my my Empoleon is basically super healthy. It's my only win condition. I just let the Galvantula basically farm me down because if he lunges me, which some people do, it's basically they lose condition. And you know, I can just I can just shield this up once and farm it down quite a lot. I know my Empoleon can survive um, a frenzy plant because you know the steel typing is really really strong. Um, obviously, I get really low, but um, thankfully I was able to farm up that Galvantula quite a bit and have the energy ready to throw on this Venusaur. And look at this <laughs> fast moves, man. Three a three turn fast move versus a four turn i just about win with my empoleon so empoleon is so great for the ultra league premier cup and it's still great for the ultra league premier cup um this is an iffy matchup because we both get to uh, the drill peck at the same time and as he gets to his energy ball and actually he gets to it faster and he wins cmp so in this case he actually tries to go for the over farm a little bit i get the drill peck in and i actually get to switch out into my kingdra which is actually really good uh, because kingdra is going to take neutral damage from this even though um Empoleon takes neutral damage as well from the energy ball, but um, Kingdra obviously being that so-called sponge uh, to absorb the damage, it's best to just go in there. And again, I'm just about, just about almost be able to get, able, almost able to reach to the outrage, but uh, sadly I wasn't able to throw, throw the Octazooka, thinking it might get. Uh, a shield. I don't get a debuff sadly. So this team is quite, I won't say it's reliant on the debuff, but the debuff really helps it win a lot of bad matchups. Um, and now I just come in with the Dragonite because I, the Kingdra was quite low in terms of farm capability and I didn't really want to uh, have like less energy facing the um, um, Obama Snow. So you know, farming down the Kingdra, I have this Dragon Claude throw, which will basically threatens the Bomb Snow, and now I can basically switch to catch this move. So my opponent's probably fury, like fuming right now, because I've caught his Energy Ball, I've caught his Weather Ball, and uh, he switches that into his uh, his Slowbro, which is pretty spicy. Uh, Shadow Slowbro as well, which does quite a bit of damage with the uh, Confusions. Um, but thankfully, all he has is Psychic and Ice Beam, which aren't really effective against Empoleon, but the, psych the, the uh, Confusions are starting to chip away at the Empoleon, so I'm going to keep my shield, because... Uh, Oh, I'm not going to keep my shield. I'm going to use my shield um, because I want to keep my Empoleon healthy because I know it's going to be used or utilized in the late game against the um, Obama Snow. And uh, the waterfalls are starting to chip away quite a lot against this uh, Slowbro because the Shadow is taking a bit of extra damage. And here, another amazing catch. Catch the Psychic uh, on my um, Dragonite, which basically seals the game because my, my Empoleon already has quite a lot of farm. My opponent thinks I'm going to throw against the uh, Slowbro. I was going to farm it down anyway. So he brings out his Empoleon. Uh, his, uh, Obama Snow, which has little snow energy, and Drill Pack takes it out, and this final waterfall takes out the Slowbro. So, um, I was playing pretty well that day. Um, I was able to climb from about 2780 uh, to about 2905 using uh, um, Empoleon Dribble Dragon lineup. And the next day, I tried using this team, and because I, I, I keep changing teams up, um, I lost quite a lot of points. So. And I was trying to go with some other teams too, just kind of see what works. Because because what I'm trying to do is get the information out to you guys, to show you what teams work uh, currently in the Ultra League Premier Cup against XL Pokemon, and what teams don't. And some teams that were really viable before aren't really that viable anymore. Like there's only like, about eight uh, to ten strong uh, Pokemon that I would recommend that are not XL, like Empoleon, Dragonite, Kingdra, Venusaur, Shadow Machamp, uh, Charizard, Gyarados. Uh, so like spicy picks like Tangrowth and uh, Ampharos can still work, but they're a little bit underutilized, I'd say. Um, they're not as strong as they were before because Galvantula is st still on the show. There's XL Galva uh, uh, Galarian Stunfisks, and uh, yeah, it's quite tricky. So this game, again, some amazing catches. So my opponent also switched into is, is uh, Gyarados, and what I like to do is I like to uh, throw um, the um, the energy on uh, from Empoleon because you know the crunch will do quite a bit, but I kind of misgaged how much damage um, my Dragonite would do against it, and I thought it'll throw an Aqua Tail, but it wasn't. It was actually a crunch, which pretty much took me out. So this game is pretty difficult, and he has a Bombastone on the back. Um, so again. I managed to get the right uh, previous game, played it really, really well. This game here, not so well. So uh, my misplay was uh, not, uh, well, my misplay was actually utilizing my Dragonite too early and should always go, should always go into Kingdra if you can um, because Kingdra is really good and it gets the Octazook and then once you get the debuff, it actually can flip games around. I mean, not this one because this one's pretty much a lost game. Obamason can just farm me down completely um, and gets tons of energy and uh, it's pretty much GG. I mean, it is a GG. I should have surrendered here, but so, you know, I like to kind of see scenarios out, learn from them from another time, and seeing back your games, you know where you misplay. And even though my opponent's still got a shield, you know, I've, I've got energy, but there's no chance. So this team, like I said again, is a little weak to Machamp in the lead, hence why you have your Kingdra. Most Machamps throw 
throw uh, cross chops, baiting out like a rock slide, which Kingdra can take. And the Octoduke will do quite a bit of damage, but obviously if you charge up to your Outrage, you'll actually get a shield off them, and then Dragonite can kind of clean that up. So uh, Machamp in the lead can be a bit problematic, but it's totally fine. Um, there are quite a lot of talent in those seeing as well, where Poland does really well. So another bad lead, and go straight into the Kingdra, because even though Kingdra has the water typing, it takes neutral from because of the dragon typing. So again, if you can build a Kingdra, which took me a bit of time, um, I highly recommend it. I still prefer Gyarados as a safe switch, like my predominant team, um, but uh, Kingdra is super strong. It just takes a little bit of time to get to the charge moves, and actually I hear there's going to be a Shadow Kingdra or something, or a variant coming out. My opponent brings out his own uh, Empoleon now, so also Kingdra does quite well against it because it, it double resists the, the water damage, the waterfalls, and uh, the uh, Hydro Cannon, so he goes for a Drill Peck, takes me out, totally fine, I'm up a shield, and what you want to do in the mirror match against the Empoleon is you want to try and sneak an extra wall falling like I did there that's basically going to help you win the game uh, my Empoleon is rank one I believe or rank three or something it's really high so it can outlast at least two um, hydro cannons and um, you try to basically get the tie on the move so your opponent doesn't get an extra waterfall through and with that extra lead advantage in terms of energy you can actually do so much with it so because of that I'm able to still have an, a charge move ready. I'm going to also shield this and throw the waterfall, not waterfall, the hydro cannon. Sadly, he managed to get a wall switch through, which it kind of sucks, but I do get the last shield off him, and now I can aggressively switch into my uh, Dragonite, because Dragonite hits super hard, hits everything super hard. I've got a shield, so I don't have to worry about anything. Thankfully, he's got nothing to counter it. Uh, in the back, he actually has a Gallade, which can do decently well, because Confusions do chunk away. But because Dragon Breath does so much damage, he can only get to one move, which is just a Leaf Blade. It would take me out, but I'd rather keep that and keep my Dragonite with almost getting to uh, the Dragon Claw, because I know my opponent only did uh, one wall switch or two wall switches. He needs the third one to get to uh, the next um, Thunder Punch. So. Again, counting your opponent's uh, energy really helps out. It really helps you flip games around. And I was able to go 4-1 in this first set. Um, get Thunderous 2, which is pretty amazing. And uh, yeah, this is like this is my um, second day of playing the Ultra League. And I managed to get to 2-9-19 two, uh, two, with that team. And then I tried different teams the next day and got totally demolished. Went down like for two days just losing completely and went all the way to 27-80 uh, like 80 again. So yeah, bad days do happen and uh, good days do also happen. Happen. and this team had an amazing run with it yesterday um, and literally went 4-1, 4-1, um, tried out Gengar team um, and then went you know, for two sets and went 4-1 again and 5-0 for the set, uh, spoiler alert, to go hit to a legend. But yeah, so this team I used to play in the last season, this is my signature team that helped me get to legend. Um, it consists of uh, Shadow Swampert, you don't, use to, you don't have to use a Shadow version, this is really a, a budget team if you want to make it budget. You can use uh, uh, regular Charizard, but I would say it requires a wing attack. Wing attack is OP on Charizard because it helps you cover the fighting um, weakness it has a little bit. It doesn't really have a weakness to fighting, but uh, Swampert doesn't really do that well against Machamp if it has an energy lead. and. Um, Wing Attack does generate energy a little bit faster than Fire Spin, and it just hits a bit harder for some of the neutral matchups. So my opponent has his Empoleon. It's, I can take uh, Hydro Cannon quite comfortably. Um, also having the uh, Swampert in the lead makes my Empoleon double Dragon matchup a lot better, whereas before when I used to have Charizard, um, basically if I see Galvantula, yeah, it's GG because my, I can't switch into my Gyarados. So having uh, the Swampert in the lead, because I was seeing so many Galvantulas, makes the team so much better. And the reason why I used to run Charizard in the lead last season is because I was seeing a lot more fighters. So do change your style of play or team um, slightly. Um, again, play with Pokemon that you're comfortable with because at the end of the day, this team's out there like um, Empoleon, the champ and Minasaur that I can't play really well, but it's Dunebug's team. It does really well, but I'm, I sadly suck at it. Um, but uh, this is the team I'm, I'm really comfortable with. I know how much damage this Pokemon can take, how much damage they can dish out. And again, I do like the Shadow Variants because they just give an extra bit of a punch to the XL Pokemon that are around. Um, because you need that extra bit of firepower against those tanky abominations. Um, please, Niantic, what were you thinking about the XL Pokemon? I know um, you're going to get helping people grind, but it really just kind of makes the gap bigger for people to try to climb. But, you know, I'm out here proving that you don't need XL Pokemon to do well in the Premier Cup. Yes, it is difficult. Um, but there are teams out there, there are Pokemon out there. So up, up against a mm, decent lead, um, I can take the Weather Balls quite re decently. So here, I'm waiting for him to throw energy because I want to get an extra much, much shot through because I know I outpace him to two Hydro Cannons, whereas um, he gets to two on um, ten um, uh, Powder Snows, whereas I need nine to get to two Hydro Cannons. So the first one obviously gets uh, get goes through and most likely second one will get shielded. So I always stay in this matchup for the first um, 
for the first charge attack and throw all my energy and try to catch a move on my Gyarados because that's the best way to not let your uh, Swampert die and he actually throws energy as well, most likely a Dazzling Gleam, it's actually a Weather Ball I don't need Shield, I don't ever Shield uh, unless I can win Switch by Gyarados because Gyarados is basically my meat shield um, I love Gyarados as a safe Switch, does really really well, having Swampert in the cover and the lead helps against the Galvantulas and Gyarados can flip a lot of matches, it's actually a really good pivot, um, I wouldn't say it's like, a, it's like a safe safe Switch in terms of always win Switch back it helps me get Pokemon really low, so Shadow Swampert can come in and farm them down, which really just helps me win the game because Shadow Swampert with energy is broken. Um, same with Charizard, Charizard hits super hard um, with Blast Burn. And the Wing Attack generates energy really quickly, and again, a fighter. This is why I have the Wing Attack. If you can TM away um, Dragon Breath, Dragon Breath is good, better for the Open Ultra League. Um, I'd say for the Premier Cup, Wing Attack is is king. It's the best way to go. Again, Obama's no matchup is a little bit awkward, but you're still hitting for, you're still hitting for a neutral against that with wing, wing Attack, and he has actually a double fire strat. So here I'm just sacking uh, my um, Swampert because I, I realize my wing, wing condition actually is Charizard. So if I throw out my uh, Swampert because I know I'd get to this energy or move, um, it was a race anyway, so I wanted him to always throw, but I had a shield, so I'm able to get to my Hydro Cannon. I'm able to take it out as well, and because the uh, Glade is quite low, um, and I also have that Dragon Claw ready, so I was able to farm tons of energy from Glade before and the Machamp, and I didn't have to shield, uh, I could just let it go and just farm down the Machamp, but um, I thought this is probably the best way to go, and able to get the win there. So yeah, team, again, this is kind of an, another ABB team because you got double flies in the back, again, they do different type of damage. Here, um, I go straight into my uh, Gyarados because Gyarados actually wins against Kingdra. If Kingdra doesn't get the debuff, you're pretty much chilling. Um, and you also get to your charge moves before Kingdra does. My opponent is a really amazing catch here, so this was one of those games where I thought, I'm going to lose this. He actually catches it on his Charizard. What a G. Um, but it's actually Dragon Breath, so it's going to do quite a bit of damage to me. Um, this is just a Dragon Claw. And this is what happens when you have a rank 1 Gyarados, um, able to survive that quite comfortably, um, I knew I would, so knowing your Pokemon really well helps out as well. These teams again don't require too much learning, but they do obviously uh, they do require a little bit of understanding of what your Pokemon can do, and what the outcomes can be from uh, the damage potential. So I bring in my own Charizard because I can take a Blast Burn, I'm not too bothered by that. If you throw a Dragon Claw, even better for me, because then I can just get head on energy, I don't have to throw anything. Dra Dragon Breath is doing quite a bit of damage, but obviously I want to get tons of energy for the Kingdra that's going to come back in. He actually has a double um, fire team in the back. Kingdra double, Kingdra double uh, fire? It's a Talonflame actually. Um, I thought it was a, ta a ta Talonflame. So the Talonflame matchup, the best way is to do fast move denial. On the third uh, incinerate, try to... Uh, try to... Okay, who's calling me? Um, sorry about that guys. Somebody just uh, started calling me for no reason. I'm not sure if my video is still recording. I'm going to have to quickly double check. Yeah, so sorry about that guys. So again, the team performs really well. I'll just edit that out later on. Um, the team just, you know, that matchup was almost, I wasn't a losing matchup because I had double water. My team pretty much counted his team. Um, but again, this is this was a tricky one. Having a Venusaur lead is quite bad, but having that uh, safe switch in Gyarados really helps out. My opponent actually has um, an elect Electrovire, which is also annoying as well. Um, Electrovire can get to his charge really quickly, but obviously uh, the Dragon Breath is doing quite a lot of damage, and that's basically your biggest damage output. The Aqua Tail does quite a lot, does really well against uh, you know most of your opponent's uh, um, you know Pokemon, and uh, the, you know. The, because you can get to your uh, charge moves really quickly, this is why I prefer uh, Gyarados over Kingdra because it really helps you, uh, the game to the charge moves like against Empoleon, the crunch really does do quite a lot of damage and all you need is just enough damage to kind of beat your opponent down where your other two Pokemon come in and sweep um, or farm down and get loads of energy. So here, I'm able to get the Lapras up to half health or half HP and now I bring in my uh, uh, Swampert because I can take two serves quite comfortably 
Um, Shadow Swampert is still fairly tanky. Um, regular Swampert is tanky as well, but I just prefer my Shadow versions because I've got better IV Shadow Pokemon. And, um, you know, I just prefer the extra damage, like I said, against, especially like Lapras and stuff. My opponent brings out his uh, Venusaur, which I was expecting. Um, I thought it'd get me down a little lower, so I had, had tons of energy built for that reason because I wanted to throw an Earthquake, but I also didn't want get, to get it Shield. But that's why I have this Charles in the back for lining up with Venusaur. So winning that. Um, uh, a safe switch matchup actually helped out a lot because now I can align my Charizard and I knew my opponent most likely wouldn't shield because he wants to save his shield for his Lapras and my opponent actually farms quite a lot here I think he all farms by one ice shot so or quite one, one or two ice shots so he actually has to shield this Dragon Claw um, and he's still farming a little bit so now he has like two moves ready or almost two moves ready so I wasn't going to shield it I'm just going to let my Swamp put basically go take it out with the Earthquake but because I knew he had quite a lot of energy I didn't want to be taken out because I was almost close to an earthquake I wasn't there yet so this way shielding up once um, gets me in a safe position because I can shield up that uh, move and then he has to throw again and the earthquake is more than enough to take out this uh, Lapras this is why I love earthquake on um, Swampert because earthquake hits super hard it really brings the Venusaur's really low as well so if, if you ever get stuck into a bad matchup the earthquake can just do the extra bit of damage where, two, where, you, where you can't actually reach two hydro cannons because only hydro cannon is the way to go but uh, you just need that extra bit of punch sometimes you know against like um, a Swampert mirror match um, you know against maybe a Galvantula because it's debuffed you like a billion times um, again XL Pokemon pin in my ass um, we're going to talk about them probably in another video but uh, this is just a short summary man yeah, it's just it's so annoying you know Niantic if you can make a separate league I know what I know why they shouldn't really do it um, it might be better just to play in the open ultra league guys because there's just less XL Pokemon around but again talent is there too um, so it's a different meta so guys don't be afraid uh, teams can still work but it's just the pool of pokemon have been reduced what's actually really effective uh, versus before where you could use quite a few different varieties of pokemon and spice was kind of still alive um i i mean i've seen someone go up to with agron and double 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 grass get to legend so you can still do it in the premier cup so guys don't give up try these teams out uh, again if you have the pokemon go for the budget variants um you know regular swamp it works regular dragonite works you know you don't need the shadow versions to make these teams work and uh, just try and climb as much as possible it can be done don't get frustrated um i got frustrated the first week thinking that's gonna be impossible with all the um uh, XL Pokemon, all the XL Cavantulas, Politoads, Ninetales, the tanky as heck, but you can still do it. Um, just know your teams, just know how to play them, and uh, just keep trying, never give up. Um, so yeah, um, obviously, I win that match up there because my opponent realized how much farm I had on my uh, Swampert and uh, able to go 5-0 and this was the game I needed from 29-46 I was thinking you know what 4-1 will be good but I get a 5-0 and I hit legend again so I was ecstatic like guys like seriously because I, I almost lost hope um, in the week that I wouldn't actually make again because time was running out but this time I'm able to hit legend a week before uh, my last last season where I hit it pretty much at the end of the Ultra League but now guys onto the third team so again that team was really good it was my it's my signature team that's helped me climb to legend twice now and it did really well against xl pokemon that's the team i would recommend first the other two teams are really strong too it just depends on your playstyle. they're a bit more aggressive and a little less forgiving um and again gengar is a very um uh, unforgiving pokemon you can do quite a lot of damage which as you can see the shadow ball just almost took that out and look at that catch again i mean talonflame is quite easy to play against because you can kind of predict its moves and uh, I'm able to get an energy lead and now I can get to two body slams and this is why I like Shadow Snorlax because the body slams actually hurt quite a lot and your opponent has to shield at least one of them. Um, again Shadow Lax, um, you, don't, you don't need to use Shadow Lax, you can just use a regular Snorlax and that will be quite good. Um, because end of the day the bulk is still quite good on the regular Snorlax whereas it loses a bit of bulk with the Shadow Variant just hits a bit harder so again pick your poison they're both good again this is a very budget team Gengar does need Shadow Punch which is a community day move obviously Gun is fairly easy to get a hold of especially you know if, if you've been hatching eggs um, some people have been unlucky so a bit difficult and uh, Snorlax has been around for a long time so it's one of those where you can actually just use Superpower is the moveset to go with um, with Body Slam and the team again is an ABB style team. Your Obstagoon is basically your cleaner or your sweeper, and uh, the uh, Snorlax is basically your, your meat shield, your sponge. So I've shown showcased three strong um, safe switches. Machamp is again a really good safe switch this season. I think it's really one of the best uh, safe switches this season. But again, it's a very, um, what's it called, uh, a high risk, high reward kind of Pokemon like Gengar. And I can't really play high risk, high reward Pokemon that well. So again, these teams are more like 
easier to kind of get into. The high, the high level players like uh, you know Jonker, so Zionic, FP Stakes, um, you know, all these people can probably play uh, the <laughs> Machamps a lot better than I can. Um, so I just prefer to use teams that are a bit more forgiving because you need that extra bit of uh, give, especially against if you make mistakes. So I was able to outwin the talent flame because I was just timing my moves correctly and I was doing fast move denial. Basically, you throw the um, a uh, night slash on the third incinerate just before he finishes the uh, the uh, animation and then he's forced to throw another incinerate so it gets to four so this is a pretty terrible lead because snorlax yeah is gonna be a problem and he takes me out with uh well he didn't take me out he does uh, he does super power so i should have shielded that but um i still was able to get two body slams but because i didn't ch uh, charge my moves right correctly or didn't throw it correctly i was able to not get that body slam off and that body slam would have done quite a lot of damage and I could have farmed this uh, Tokus a lot better and I need all the farm I can get because yeah uh, uh, Gengar is basically your win condition for a lot of the games um, again I said Obstacle was Obstacle can do really well too it's, it's your bulk as well as your uh, Snorlax but uh, Gengar with shields is, is the idea Gengar can get ahead on shields it can do so much damage with Shadow Ball Shadow Ball is basically game changing um, so good and now you know my opponent has lost his uh, Charmer and I bring out my Obstagoon. And this team, I won't say suffers against double charmers, like you see I won the last game, but it can struggle against a double charm team like this one because of this move timing. I missed out on the opportunity to move correctly uh, through the body slam, or throw two body slams, and I missed out on the damage. And with that, leaves me more vulnerable. But obviously he had, uh, he won switch. And if you win switch against this team, you can do quite well, because then you just realign your Snorlax. So, Again, this team does really well, really strong team, Gengar, super OP, um, but quite accessible. I'm just trying to <laughs> fast move it down. So yeah, um, last game you saw me fast moving down, uh, was it a Grand Ball? Oh, I'm getting confused. But yeah, um, Shadow Ball, you know, try to get through, doesn't go through, gets shielded. My opponent was very smart, he called the shield, he knew Snorlax would be more than enough to take on my Gengar, and he's got double charmers, so he, you know, once he saw the goon, it was pretty much GG. Um, but again, this team is solid. You know, you, you will get a few losses here and there. No team is going to get you five O's or four ones consistently. I mean, my team did to help me the last day or two. Um, literally, my team went from uh, my Charizard team uh, went from uh, twenty nine eighty eight, sorry twenty seven eighty eight, all the way to three thousand nineteen in one full set rotation. Um, if I didn't mess around with um, with two different teams in the middle. So if I just used my the same team for four sets, I would've got there. So it's a strong team, it really worked. I had a bit of luck on my side and uh, really pulled through. Um, so Shadow Snorlax does quite well against Venusaur because Venusaur, the Frenzy Plants hurt. Frenzy Plants hurt everything, but um, the Body Slams are all equally punishing. Like I said, the Shadow Damage does add up. The Lick especially adds up over time, and that's what you need. Um, that's why one of the reasons why I actually prefer Shadow Lax over the regular Lax because the Lick just adds up. You can see the chip damage it's doing. And at this, at this range, I'm happy for, to let my Snorlax go because uh, Gengar doesn't have to worry about anything that uh, Venusaur can throw at it. I've got two shields, and my opponent has zero perfect the reason why i'm shielding here is because uh, yeah i need to shield now because frenzy plant will take me out um normally again can take a frenzy plant quite comfortably and i'm able to fully farm it down and gengar with energy and a shield is deadly as i'm pretty sure you've seen Zanix videos it goes boom everything um so yeah seeing kingra's annoyingly a lot more and you know after the first matchup seeing him shield the first thing and he actually has a talent flame in the back so this is the match i was talking about so i'm um, look at what i'm doing so i know my opponent will most likely go for um flame charge but i'm shielding anyway because brave bird would have got me fairly low i probably would have survived it but now i'm counting his fast moves and i want to throw the night slash on his fourth uh sorry on his third incinerate because he's basically almost at the energy he gets the energy now throw because he over taps he actually throws another incinerate which lets me get to uh, some more damage off and because of that um my opponent actually is unable to he actually does it again for some reason he overforms it again um, or no no that was the, that was the fourth one sorry so I threw it on the third one and look at that boost for the BM so what I did there was I threw it before the third one before he threw the third one and that way I got my damage off and then I had enough energy to get to another one and I threw it on his third incinerate and then I was so close and because of the so-called um, fast move denial he not fast move denial he basically over tapped I was able to get to a third night slash so a little bit of understanding on how to play obstacle against Talonflame but Talonflame is easily counterable if you have the right Pokemon against it obviously and uh, yeah it can punish its long animation so I see another Kingra so this time 
rather than going for the Shadow Bolt, I'm throwing a Shadow Punch, uh, learning from my last mistake. I mean, Shadow Punch, you can go, depending on what you feel, you can go with what you want what you want, what you want to throw, because Shadow Punch does more damage, sorry, Shadow Ball does more damage. I tend to kind of throw it, because sometimes your opponent is expecting a Shadow Punch, even though you built up to it, um, and they don't shield, so it takes Pokemon out, like the first Talon Flame you saw, and this one obviously shielded, um, and I knew you would most likely shield, because Kingdra wants to get to the Octazookas, and that's the thing about Kingdra's going to take forever to get to his charge moves, and here, I'm happy to let my Snorlax go down, again, acting as the meat shield, the, the damage sponge because Gengar can just come in and farm and because I'm up a shield getting the shield advantage is really key in this, in this team I'm up a shield um, I can just fully farm this down and Dragon Breath did quite a lot of damage but again now I've built up to a Shadow Ball and Kingdra comes back in and what's, what's going to happen to Kingdra is going to go bye bye yeah boom takes it out you know and I've still got my uh, Gengar here as well and I'm able to get to this uh, uh, Shadow Punch. So I was trying to get to the Shadow Ball, but I knew the incinerator would, would register and take me out. So I do switch out straight away into my Obstagoon. So leaving that Gengar just in case I need it for like the late game uh, or the end game because Gengar can still get like two uh, Shadow Calls off before he goes down because incinerator takes so long to register the damage. And most likely this is going to be a Flame Charge. I'm going to shield anyway because I don't want it to be a Brave Bird because then he can just take me out. Uh, Talon Flame has quite a lot of health. So again, I'm doing. I'm going to do the uh, so called. Um, over tapping mechanism so I'm throwing the first night slash and I'm gonna get a shield and look he over taps here now I can throw the second night slash and uh, most likely my opponent will take me out this I knew the scenario won't take me out but uh, he'll get obviously now he can throw his move because he's got enough energy the over tap just kind of makes you basically energy is registering and you basically over, you basically press the charge move and it goes it doesn't go through so they see Gengar coming in to shadow claw the talent flame down so you need to understand how much damage you can take how much damage you can output and basically understand how you can play around talent flame so a great lead Gengar against Machamp is a, is a phenomenal lead um, and again the reason why I throw Obstagoon is because it, it does it basically is useless ish against Machamp um, and I know it's because it's powder snow as well it can basically do quite well against this um, lower nine tails and at this rate I'm, I'm actually happy to let my uh, obstacle die because he's basically going to act as a meat, meat sponge he actually goes for a weather ball so this was his mistake um, and I knew cross drops will do quite a bit of damage so obviously they add up and neutral, even though it's neutral damage it does add up I throw a night slash here trying to go for the boost I get the boost you know obstacle you know, gets the boost every not every time, but he gets the boost quite quite a lot, and he goes for weather ball again. So because I've got the boost, I'm actually going to shield here because I know I can win switch. Even um, like I can just farm it down now because he's so low. So I'm surprised Obstagoon pulling through against a Nine Tails uh, Powder Snow because counters do do well against uh, uh, a Nine Tails. Obviously neutral damage, and I had uh, obviously cross shot ready to throw as my champ did half health more than enough and I had pretty much low health to basically be, be farmed down by the Machamp so he, I come in with my Gengar, he swaps that into his Venus so got my um, Snorlax, so winning switch there was really key otherwise I would have lost the match because he would have aligned his uh, Machamp with my Snorlax and yeah I mean I would have farmed it down so it would have not, would have not been lost but it would have been a bit more tricky but here you know I, I know my Snorlax can do quite a lot of damage can take one frenzy plant and you know he gets to the body slam before i think my opponent was trying to overform quite a bit because he should have got to the frenzy plant before but uh maybe i'm just miscounting moves you know, he, he's trying to overform completely and he throws it just before well he throws it just as i get my charge move and uh i wanted to shield but i thought i'll leave it i'll save it for gengar because gengar can pretty much clean up uh, the well gengar has a pretty good game against the champ anyway because of how it takes no damage from it um, and I'm able to out, out CMP well not CMP tie I'm able to win CMP because Gengar has such a high attack rating and take out the Venusaur before it throws a move at me which basically means I've got a shield so able to go 4-1 in that set as well this is another strong team again this is more a budget team the teams and again I, I lost loads of points again because I was trying out different teams I was trying out the Empoleon um, Empoleon Shadow Machamp and Venusaur line Junkus, uh, not Junkus line um, Doombug's line not great with it again like i said it's one of those high risk high reward teams i can't play that team really well there's also a team that's going around i think it's uh snorlax um is it obstagoon uh, sorry snorlax kingdra and uh, a Togekiss. try that team kind of all right i think a popular stream is showcasing that team wasn't a big fan i also tried i also tried what else did i try i tried quite a few different teams i even tried the uh uh Ar argon agron agron double grass line uh, all right fun but uh, not my playstyle so again recognize what teams are your playstyle and guys i hope you enjoy this video please support the video by liking and sharing hopefully this helps you out these are three strong teams i can recommend to hit legend um this season especially with all the xl pokemon running around and i know xl pokemon are a pain in the bum but it is what it is 
Nantic won't do shit about it. They won't make it in a different league. We can still get there. We can still get to legend, and hopefully these teams can help you help push you over the edge. I will highly recommend the Gengar team, but it does take a bit more finesse because Gengar is a high skill Pokemon. Um, and yeah, I'm using it. I suck. Um, but again, my team, my signature team, did really well for me. It's a really strong team, budget friendly. Again, you don't have to use any shadow versions of these Pokemon that I've shown today. Just utilize what you have, um, and this should perform really well for you. And guys, best of luck hitting legend. Hopefully, see you in the next one. Take care.